Fedora's computer. Okay. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, so this is the first of uh, what we're calling the daily journey, and I want to just, I guess, this morning take you through what's some of the stuff that God that's been on my heart, that God has been putting on my heart over the last actually year or so, and how we've been working to put this together. Um, you guys are on have been attended one of our spiritual retreats, so some of this stuff is actually uh, taking what we've done on our spiritual retreats and uh, putting it in a way that people can access on a day by day basis. So I'm just going to share uh, my screen with you because I've got a PowerPoint that I'd like to work through uh, this morning. And here we go, and I'm just to explain it. So, so we're going to call this the daily journey because uh, that's one of the things I've been sensing that we need to daily connect with God. And I think that's one of the issues that we're seeing perhaps across kingdom businesses that there, there's not this focus on the daily walk with God. Uh, we've been working on our mission statement and, and I'd appreciate the feedback on this, but it's what, what does business blessings do? And in essence, I've been um, sensing that this is we're connecting you with God and others through simple strategies that help you to grow your business supernaturally. And I think that's one of the things that they, sometimes we think that this is all too complicated. How do we work with God in our business? But actually God is saying to us, no, it's actually some very simple things that we need to do uh, each and every day that enables us to connect with God and others uh, that helps us to grow our businesses supernaturally. Uh, last year, I felt God started to say to me, um, to stop, stop looking at the ones that have impacted hundreds or thousands of people's lives during their lifetime, but start looking at the ones that have impacted millions of people during their lifetime. And uh, so, so that really got me thinking because um, like who, who are the ones that have literally impacted um, millions of people? And so there was a couple that came, uh, came up. Uh, so some of them was uh, a couple of years ago, we uh, connected with Henry and Richard Blackaby because today, if you look around the world, they're perhaps one of the top uh, people who are ministering to CEOs. Uh, if you look at people like uh, Zig Ziglar, like they say that during his lifetime, he impacted nearly uh, 300 million people. Uh, another lady that I've often referred to as Mary Kay Ash. I mean, uh, the, um, um, her company and Mary Kay Cosmetics, I was trying to think about it, now has 3 million salespeople around the world. So, you know, that's huge stuff. If you look at uh, um, people like like uh, uh, Luther, who impacted me in St. Ignatius, there's a whole pile of people that I've been looking at. The other thing that God's been saying to me, it's not about your dreams, but it's about your destiny, that I sense that God is... Um, really has a call of God on people's lives that he desires to see fulfilled. I mean, we talk about our dreams, but what about the call that God has for us and how do we work with him on that? <clears throat> so as I was looking at these different ones and talking uh, to different ones, I thought they seemed to come through some daily practices that these guys did. And um, so what if we could take those daily practices and put them into a workbook? Um, because I know that people, business people like structure. You know, they just want to know, just tell me what to do. What are the seven steps for doing this? The 10 steps here, the six steps there, whatever that, some of that stuff drives me crazy, by the way. But, but you know, it's about that. How could we, could we break it down into, are there things that we need to do every morning and things that do we not do it at night? Uh, then there's been issues of what order we do it in. And, you know, there's been funny, as I've been seeking God uh, on this, something would happen, I'll listen to something and someone say, uh, it just came out of the blue. No, this is this is the way to do it. Uh, do we do it electronically or do we uh, do it handwritten? And it constantly came through that handwritten was the best way to do it. How many days a week do we do it? Well, obviously there's seven days a week and you need to really connect with God on that. So the workbook is based on seven days, but people could do less or more than that. And then there was the question of, is this actually something that God wants us to do? 
So a couple of weeks back now, I, I went to a couple of key people um, who are not uh, inside my normal circle. Some were, some weren't. Uh, and just said to them, is this something that you think God's calling us to do? And, and actually, it was funny. Like for a week or two, no one responded to me. I was very despondent. But then actually all on one day, they started coming back and saying, yes, this is something that was of God. And there was a, it was a, a very interesting scripture that came through. And it's found in Acts 17 verse 27. But if I go back to 26, it speaks about the fact that God made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined their appointed times and their boundaries of their habitation. And like this really spoke to me, the fact that God has put us in the place he's put us into. Um, uh, and, but in verse 27, it says that they would seek God. So he's put us in this place so that we may seek God. Some of you, uh, you know, question, uh, am I in the right business? Am I doing the right thing? But actually, God's put you in that place so that you might seek God. And then there's, it's interesting, if perhaps they might grope for him and find him, though he's not far from each one of us. And it's interesting using this word grope. Uh, and the word grope has really struck me. Um, it's like, it, it's like um, there's, there's two, if you look up the dictionary of groping, and it, it, like if you look around the world today, Groping is being used, mainly used in, in the sexual context. Like we've, we've looked at the Harvey Weinstein incidents, you know, there's a lot that's going on and being exposed in that sexual area at this point in time. And so groping is referred to in that way. But, but the other way is where you're blindly looking for things. And, I, and this is what I, I felt like. There are so many people, and, and I would include myself in this at times, that we're, we're groping for God. It's like we've got our blindfolds on and we're looking around god where are you in all this we're groping for him but it's actually but when we do that we're groping for him and we can find him and he jesus god saying to us this morning that he is not far from us and he can be found so are there things that we need to be doing so that we're not no longer blindly groping for him so that we are finding him so this is why we put this together and and if you look at what the common traits are that I've seen, one of them is the two chairs. So some of you will know that uh, earlier this year, I interviewed Bob Bodine and he's got this book, Two Chairs. And we're now going to make uh, his uh, recording much more widely available. Um, and as I've been practicing the two chairs, which is, and I'll go through each one of these in details. Actually, a lot of this has come out of my time with God. So, so the common traits were there were people who s spoke to God and listened to God, but they also obeyed him. They were people of the word of God. They had their goals and they regularly reviewed them. And they were men and women of prayer. They implemented some kind of daily examination where they reviewed their day. They were really big on thanking people. And talk about the 35K list, which is about preparing for the next day. And again, the people of prayer. So we've put those together into morning and night sessions. So in the morning, we're going to encourage you to have your two chair session and read the Bible to review your goals daily and to spend time in prayer. Then at the end of the day or sometime, you know, wherever that suits you in your schedule is the daily examine. And we've got a, a process to go through to review your day taking time to thank people, preparing for your next day, and again, take some time in prayer. So I'm going to go through each one of these to give you uh, an indication of what we're looking for or what we're recommending that you do uh, in each one of these. So I'm just taking one note. So two chairs. So again, I took um, the actual name two chairs comes from Bob Bodine and his book two chairs. But really what Bob is talking about there is something that's been happening uh, throughout history, men and women sitting down and talking to God. But I love the way that Bob has put it because he asks you three questions. Does God know your situation? Of course, the answer to that is yes. Is it too hard for him to handle? The answer of course to that is no. And does he have a good plan for you? And of course, the answer to that is yes. But the, the thing is so often that we don't know the answer to those questions because we don't take time out to listen to God and to what he says. So 
Bob encourages us to literally set up two chairs every morning, one for you and one for God to get up and say, good morning, God, what is on your heart for me today? And, and this, I'm going to encourage you guys to, to listen uh, to the interview I did with Bob, but also to read the book because it's, he tells story after story of how God guided him and directed him each day. And, and I can attest to this too. There's times that um, like even putting this daily journey together has been, God, what do I do with this? Who do I talk to? Where do I go? And suddenly names would pop into a mind or, or something would happen in that sense. So that's the two chairs. So the second one is the Bible. Uh, you know, Joshua makes it very clear. In Joshua 1 verse 8, he says, Keep the book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. So being prosperous and successful is actually actually linked to and connected with the word of God. And I think we forget this so often um, that, uh, you know, there's a lot of devotional books around these days, which actually, uh, and, and you're great devotionals, which encourage you and build you up, but we need to be focused on actually getting into the word of God each day. The other passage of scripture that I love in this area is Hebrews 4.12 says, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. And it's just when we actually in, um, allow the word of God to come and penetrate us, it kind of cuts away that which is not of God and brings into place that which is of him. But we need to actually allow that to happen. Now, there's many different styles of reading the Word of God. Um, and, and, you know, you may, as you work through, you may want to use your own one. But what it's, it's fascinating to me that um, as I looked at spiritual formation and the way people grow, it's when you've actually been provided a passage of Scripture rather than choosing a passage of Scripture yourself and uh, being allowed to interact with that, that it, that it seems to make the difference. So, so what we've done in the daily journey is we've allocated you one scripture per week to go through. And you're thinking, wow, that's not enough. But to use it, uh, use the prayer of imagination. Now, I know some of the ones on the line have, have used this. And the more I use it, the more I sense that it really takes you deeper into the presence of God because we encourage you every day to read through the passage seven times. And there's a series of questions to ask every day. And we're going to get you to read that passage every day for seven days. And you're going to think, Oh, this is, um, this is going to be a bit too much, but it was fascinating. I was uh, recently, I was leading another session in a, in a talk that I was doing and I pulled out a passage of scripture for that particular group that I had read time and time and time again. And just as I went through it again, and as the group interacted with it, there was um, just some insight that God gave me. And I thought, you know what? We need to stick to doing this, the same passage every day. The next one is goals. And, you know, the, um, the stats around goals are actually quite horrific if you look at them. So, uh, from my research, you know, the, the stats that come out say that 80% of people do not even think about goals. 16% don't write them down. 4% write them down, but only 1% write goals down and regularly review them. And these guys are amongst the highest achievers. And I've been listening to story after story recently of people who, who constantly sit down and re regularly review their goals every morning. Uh, we're going to encourage you to, there's different ways of writing goals, but using the smart format, being specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time related. But the other thing that we're adding into this is to ask God to daily help you to review your goals. God, is this actually what you want me to focus on? Um, are there ch any changes to it? Guide me, which is the one where I put my focus on first? Then we finish the morning with prayer. Uh, recently I had a long chat with James Condon, who was the uh, head of the Salvation Army for the Northern Territories before they merged to one Salvation Army uh, organization Australia-wide. 
And I was asking him about his prayer life. Um, and he said, he said something that's really been very profound and struck me. He said his prayer is, God, take me deeper in prayer. God, take me deeper in prayer. And I thought, what a powerful prayer to pray. God, take me deeper in prayer. So we've included there a prayer page for you to write down your prayers in the morning. And, look, you know, I'm not expecting uh, for, you know, to become a top intercessor in this, but to simply write down every day, God, these are my prayers. And sometimes even just write the act of writing them down is actually a prayer to God. And the thing about writing them down too is that you've got a record of what you're praying. You can go back and see how God answers prayer so that in those dark times that are going to come, then you've got a record for prayer. Okay, so that's that's the morning ones. Then at night, we're encouraging you to do the daily examine. So this is, look, I need to be quite honest with you here. I, I really struggle with this daily examine. <laughs> <laughs> and it's um, it's funny. I I don't know what it is. Uh, but it, but as I the more I've got into it, and the more I've started to do it, and to get into practice, I realize how powerful a tool it is. So it was created by a guy called Saint Ignatius. Um, and actually, if you look around the internet, there's there's different questions and different ways to do this. But basically, it's a set of questions to help you to review your day. So often, um, uh, you know, so as you do it, I encourage you, this is um, to imagine yourself in the presence of Jesus. So you may actually do kind of a two chairs scenario. And, and this is one of the things I found is actually picturing that you're on a couch with Jesus. And you begin by thanking him for the day and asking the Holy Spirit for guidance as you review your day. So one of the ways to do this is to imagine a, a moving picture theater of your past day but with Jesus and letting your day flow by as from a moving train or and you can fast forward the movie or go back and allow Jesus to stop the train or the movie and allowing him to interrupt the stream of consciousness and focus on whatever parts of your day weren't. So, so, so that, that can be a key thing. So, so the daily examiner allows you to actually review your day and to ask God, God, what is going on? What's happening? And how, how do we, how do we move through that? So we have questions to ask every day and the questions are quite powerful. And then we've got some reflection parts on that. So part of that, is to actually go through and, and look at Thanksgiving, asking God for insight. So there may be something that's happened during the day that you need further clarification on. Um, is there anything in relation to selfishness or pride or fear, confusion or tiredness or frustration, love or generosity? Um, look at your day. Uh, how, what's, what's your behavior been like? What's your connections been like? Asking for forgiveness. Is there anything, God, that I need to be asked for forgiveness to? And then looking forward to tomorrow. And you'll find that um, now this, you actually may just go through this in a minute or two at the end of every day, or maybe longer than that. And that's going to be up to you. But the practice of the daily examine is quite powerful and will help you in that daily journey to review, to review things with God. So the next one, is um oh, hang on. Can't move forward here thank you um those who know me know i'm quite passionate about um yeah it's in it it's I, i'm being a bit hesitant here because um i've been pondering a lot about thankfulness lately and I've been thinking about that. I don't think that we're naturally thankful people because if you, if you look at, you know, for those who've got children know that we're constantly saying to our kids, did you say thank you? Did you say thank you? And, uh, and I can remember that, um, that a uni, I was leading a Christian group there when I was at uni and people often say to me that I'm very unthankful. <laughs> and, and that really hit me because I thought, Oh, I didn't think there's it. So, 
So this whole area has been a huge learning curve for me. It wasn't until a few years ago, uh, uh, one of my pastors at the time preached on Psalm 50 verse 23. And kind of my version of it says, he who gives thanks honors God and prepares the way for salvation to come. And each of us needs salvation, whether that be answers to the situations we're facing now, or we just simply need wisdom. The thankfulness opens the doors. Um, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, Paul is very, like in here it says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. So to know the will of God in this sense is for God to actually to be thankful. So in the daily journey, we can, we're can we taking this to a whole new level. And actually, it's interesting, um, as I've looked around and studied uh, these guys, there seems to be a common trait with leaders. They're constantly asking people to do things, and they're also thanking people for doing those things. There's two things. Um, because as leaders, if you're moving a high power, there's no way that you can do everything. But uh, it's asking people to do things and thanking people for doing those. And if we actually forget the thanking part, it actually stops us from getting people to do the things for us in the future. So if you look at, um, like it's interesting to me, Mary Kay Ash, for example, with all her Mary Kay cosmetic stuff, they, they encourage you to write five thank you notes a day out to people. And, um, you know, there's other, if you look, there's a whole series of other great people that have implemented that in their lives. And it has, uh, it has resulted in their businesses growing quite dramatically. So it's a very simple strategy. Um, so we're going to encourage you to, to every day, think about five, who are five different people that you can thank today and to send them either a text or a note, or we're going to encourage you to use the send out cards app to send them a physical card in the mail. Uh, just something to touch base with them. And look, to be honest, I think this is one of the things that has grown my business um, the most. It's a very simple and effective strategy. But yet it also, um, uh, to me, when, when I've been down or not being able to focus, if I sit down and catch up on my thank you notes, it puts me in a right frame of mind for things to move forward. So, so that's the thank you part of the afternoon. The next one is the 35K list. And um, you, can, you can look on the internet and find different people say this story in different ways. And, and I like the way Mary Cash say, Kash says it the best. So I'm going to read this story from her. There's a, one of the little books that I'd love to give out to people is Miracles Can Happen. It's really great. Very Like if you look at some of these um, guys that have read the word of God and distilled it down into these are practical things that I need to do every day from the word of God. So, so Mary Kay says this, early in my sales career, I heard a story that has to have a lasting effect on me in the way I work. The subject was time management and the story concerned Ivy Lee, a leading efficiency expert, and Charles Schwab, the president of a then a small company called Bethlehem Steel. And of course, Bethlehem Steel went on to become a very large corporate organization. So Ivy Lee called on Charles Schwab and said to him, I can increase your efficiency and your sales if you allow me to spend 15 minutes with each of your sales executives. Naturally, Schwab asked, well, what will that going to cost me? And he said, nothing unless it works. In three months, you can send me a check for whatever you think is worth. Fair enough. So they did this deal. So Schwab agreed. So Lee spent 15 minutes with executives from the struggling young steel company and asked them to complete a single task. Every evening for the next three months, each executive was to make a list of six most important things he had to do the next day. Finally, the executive was to rank the items in the order of importance. So each morning began with the first item on the list and then scratch it off when it's finished. Just work your way down the list of those six items. If you don't get something finished, it goes on to the next day's list. So the end of the three month trial, efficiency in sales had increased to such an extent that Swab sent Lee a check for $35,000. So uh, this is, uh, it was a lot of cash for a very small amount of work. Now we think about 35,000 today is not a lot of money, but this is going back in 1800. So it's probably was worth either 350,000 or could have been worth $3 million today. So, so Mary Kay says she was very impressed with this story. So she pondered it and implemented it. And it's one of the things that we've been finding that, um, 
uh, particularly, uh, you know, we've now got this uh, program called Co Co <coughs> Co-Starters Helping People Establish Businesses. And it's like, actually, time management is key thing, and they're not getting the tasks done, the key tasks done every day. So what is the key task? The other thing that I say to this is we need to add in the power of the Holy Spirit here. I always remember two um, testimonies from people. One was a doctor when he was uh, studying. He would pray, God, show me what it is I need to study today. And the other thing is, God, help me to do this in a shorter time frame than what it normally takes people to do that. And, and he would often testify about that. The one was I heard an engineer who had his, you know, a whole, like in those days, you'd have your in-tray. These days we have an in-tray on our computer in their box. So they have this huge tray of things. And he would just work through that tray and say, okay, God, what is it that I need to do now? And it's often, like I've often prayed this prayer myself and come across, you know, so you've just got this strong impression you need to focus on this particular thing now. And as you've done that, um, something has happened and it's ready for when when you need it. So, so there. So it's a prayerful thing as well. God, what are the practical things I need to do? And finally, to finish the day in prayer as well. Um, again, um, to simply write out your prayers. It may be, God, this is what's happened to you today. You know, I pray for this or someone's told you about something to pray for or to write that down. There's two scriptures that I often pray for myself and for others. And one is Isaiah 11, two and three, asking that the spirit of the Lord would rest upon me, the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, a spirit of counsel and might, that I would have the fear of the Lord and be a person of quick understanding. And that is uh, that scripture is actually based on Jesus. Uh, that that's, they have the sevenfold spirit of God, and the other one is in Colossians one verse nine to fifteen. You know this this passage was given to me at a very difficult time in my life when we had um, a situation with a specific person who was causing us great distress, great distress. I said, God, I don't know how to pray for this person, and. Um, I had to speak at this event and um, and I was so, I, I went to it and I was so tired. I thought, oh, I didn't want to go to the first session, but I just felt I needed to. And so it was a guy. So there was two of us who were main speakers at this event. And I thought, actually, to be polite, I probably need to go and hear him speak. But he spoke on this passage in, in Colossians 1, 9 to 15. And since then, it's really struck home and been a very powerful prayer. The prayer that says, I pray that God will fill you. And guys, I sense even today that this is something that you need, those that are on this call and listening to it. I pray that God will fill you with the knowledge of your will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that I have life, a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way, that I bear fruit in every good work, that, yeah, that everything would bear fruit growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to your glorious might, so that I may have great endurance and patience and, and be one who gives joyful thanks to the Father because you've qualified me to share in the inheritance of the holy people in the kingdom of light. So thank you that you have rescued me from the dominion of darkness and brought me into the kingdom of the Son you love, whom I have redemption and forgiveness of sins. God has taken us from the kingdom of light and uh, from the kingdom of darkness, sorry, and put us into the kingdom of light. He has rescued us. And he wants to pour out on us his spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. If you look at that, there's a constant theme throughout all Paul's scriptures. Um, they're giving us spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And James says, you know, if you don't have wisdom, uh, uh, ask God, and he'll give it to you. All the Proverbs is about gaining wisdom. and the, I, some of you heard this funny story. I can remember I'd been praying, God, I need wisdom. I need wisdom. I need wisdom. And, and uh, this one day I was driving to work and going across the gateway bridge. And I said to God, God, when on earth am I going to get this wisdom? You keep, so I keep asking for it, but when am I going to get it? And it was funny uh, during the day when the staff came in and saw me, um, he asked me a question. I answered it. He went out and then he stopped, turned around and came back and said, Whereas you're so wise. And I thought, God, you answered my prayer today uh, in doing that. So, so there you are. So that's, uh, I'll go back. So 
what we're saying to you in the daily journey that, that in the morning, take time to go through your two chairs, to read the word of God, to review your goals and to pray. And the evening to do the daily exam and to get your thank you notes done, prepare for the next day and to pray. And these things start to put in place. They're very simple things. Like this is not rocket science. But what we've done is we've put them all together in a workbook. Um, so what we're looking for is over the next three months, so November, December, January, and we'll go into February because we've started a week later than what I was hoping to do. Um, is to do a three-month trial. I'm looking for people to say, you know what, for the next three months, I'm going to try these things. So, and it's a very key time. For, we're closing out the year, and some of you have still got stuff that you need to complete and get through in November and December. For a number of businesses, this is actually your largest sales time of the year, but also setting you up for the new year. Uh, I know I, I, I've been astounded at the moment of a number of people who seem to have some amazing opportunities before them. Um, th there's been some connections going on, but, but that opportunity is still an idea stage. It hasn't actually got off the ground yet and going for it. Uh, God is working with them, but it's, so it's, so it's two things encouraging you to work with God in what he's saying to you but making sure you do the work that needs to be done. And I think that's why I like the balance of how God has been putting together, looking at goals and reviewing them and looking at your tasks and things to do and being involved in that. I've sensed for a whole, um, see, like this came when I had Richard Blackaby who, who ministers to the fortune 500 companies in the U S and I had him in the car by myself for, for an hour. And I thought, Oh, this is great. Um, here, this is my opportunity to just suck him dry of, of what he does to minister to, to these top executives. And um, so I said to him, well, you know, what is the key thing you, that, that you encourage them to do? Uh, so this is like the first five minutes of talking. He said, intimacy. He said, that's it. Helping them to have intimacy with God. So that was it's pretty quiet then for the rest of the hour. I'm thinking this mighty man of God's in my car. And, and that's all he says to me. Um, but it's, um, it's building as we build that intimacy with God, everything comes out of that. Um, it's, it's interesting. If you look at the definition of a kingdom business, it's actually all about the owner. And the uh, and what God's doing with the owner and walking out the owner's calling and purpose. That calling and purpose comes purely from from our connection with God. But yet we know that the stats say that only twenty five percent of Christians actually read the Word of God and connect with Him on a day by day basis. You know we have this advantage. We have this advantage that the God of the universe has his plans and purposes for us. And he says to us to come call unto him and, and he will answer us and show us great and mighty things that we have not known. We, it, it's about building in these daily disciplines. Um, yeah. So we've put together the workbooks and uh, we just looked at the final run of them. So they'll be ready later on today to start to send out to you guys. We are charging you for the next three months because I know that unless you have skin in the game, you're not going to do it. And, um, you know, there's a, if you give somebody something for free, they don't value it. So we're asking you for an investment of $97 for three months of the once off, or if you want to pay 37 per month, or maybe $45, just if you just want to do it for one month. So during that time, you're going to get the three different manuals. I was hoping to do it in one manual, but it's actually too big. Um, so there's actually 12 passages of scripture that we're going to take you through during those times. So we've really saw God as to those ones. I'm going to do this weekly uh, morning group call. So this morning has been a more instructional one, but next week we'll actually take a scripture and take you through it and walk you through. And, and for some of you by then, we'll have actually started this process and, and you want some feedback. We're setting up some closed Facebook and LinkedIn groups. We want to build community. I am going to ask to survey you regularly because I want to know where you're at now with your walk with God. 
how much time you're spending reading the word. Well, it's not about time really. Cause uh, one of the things I think is, is, is how much time is this going to take? Well, that's going to be up to you. Um, it may be a half an hour in the morning, maybe a half an hour in the light. It may be an hour in the morning. I don't know. It's going to, that's going to be up to you. But what I do know that unless you take that time out and spend it with God, it's, yeah. I've been walking with God long enough to know that unless I spend that time with him in the morning, my rest of the day gets shot. And it's as an investment in time in doing that. And we're going to encourage you to share with others. So, so if you go to businessblessings.com today, you'll see everything there and you can order from there. And I know actually some of you on the call have already done that, which is great. So that's the daily journey uh, that we, we've been working on and putting together. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and just check in and say, have you guys got any questions? I'll unmute you. Have you got any questions about or anything you want to say as a result of uh, what you've uh, seen today. Intimacy with God, I think, is, is the key point to the whole structure of what you're, um, what we're about to embark upon, Wes. Yeah, you know, it's it's uh, very important for for each of us to, to maintain that personal relationship. And it's, it's um, uh, quite evident that, that God's put this information to you to give to me because that's what, what my request has been, having a closer intimate relationship with God. And I've been praying and fasting for that um, for the last um, uh, couple of months. And, um, yeah, so I just thank you for for listening to, to God and um, uh, doing the hard yards of putting it all together. So thank you, Wes. Thank you, Rob. I really appreciate that. It is, um, you know, it actually highlights something to me that, um, you know, when we walk in our call and our destiny, that we release others into their call and their destiny. Um, That's so, right, yeah. You know, so it's, so it's actually helping each one of us, you know, on a day by day basis saying, God, you know, what, what is, what is that? You know, and sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, there's actually speaking, you know, you, you may just get <laughs> like, I had that time with Richard Blackley and he said to me intimacy and, and like, you know, to be honest, I got really annoyed with him because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I thought, great. You know, <laughs> it's, it, it, but it's, it's in those simple things. It's those simple things that, uh, and you know, business is not rocket science. You know, it's, it's about offering a good product or service and building relationship with people and getting word out about it. Now there's, there's management things, you know, that happen around that and, and, you know, the systems and procedures yeah. you need to put in place, but, but actually, it, it, <laughs> it's not rocket science, really, to do that. And we, we try to, and, and the same with our relationship with God, I think we try to make it so complicated, but it's not. It's not complicated. And, um, you know, this is one of the things, you know, as I've, um, you know, as God has had me just reviewing, you know, what it is that we do with business blessings. And to come up with that statement that I read early on about, you know, we're about connecting uh, you with God and others and providing you with simple strategies uh, so that you can grow your business supernaturally. I, I just, God, that's really what it's about. And, um, yeah. and, but you know, even that whole process of putting that together was God, I'm at a loss here. You've got to clarify something. Um, and actually part of this came out of time when we, we had some things dry up and I thought, God, why, why is this drying up? You know, why is this happening? And he says, cause I, I need to change your direction in some things. And I actually, like it was interesting. He said to me, you've got, I keep calling you to go into all the world and preach the gospel, but what you're doing only allows people in your local area to do stuff. You need to, I want you to put something together that enables you to go global. 
and and I see this and I'm thinking, God, this is this is what you're calling us to do. Yeah. 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 Mm. I thank you for that word. Thank you. Um, um, for me for me, where's it's um goal setting and just improving that um with, with because it's a part time business and I work full time. Yes. Um so I find that um, management of that little bit of time I have for the part-time business, I've got to be very organised. Well, and I think out of that, like I often think, you know, we've got four kids. Uh, I, I'm involved in numerous different projects. We've got church. We've got my marriage, you know, and we've got all these different things. And we, we need the guidance of the Holy Spirit to do this. God, what is it that I need to focus on today? The other thing, too, with that, Melanie, is I I think that, you know, this thing when we wait on God, God, who is the right person I need to connect with today who's going to open doors for me? And, um, you know, I've seen that over this last year that as God has put, you know, you need to connect with so-and-so. And and I think, how the heck do I connect with so-and-so? you know, Manny Pacquiao is the prime, the major one I've done this year, but there's others that are speaking to me about at the moment that I'm just thinking, God, you can't be asking me to do these things. But he is, you know, so this is, this is the thing that he, God knows who the people are that you need to connect with to grow what he's entrusted you to the whole new level. So actually, so it's not just him dropping the name of that person into him, but God, what is the strategy for doing that? And um, so often, let's say, uh, it's not what God told you to do, it's what he's telling you to do. And I use the example of this of Abraham and Isaac. You know, God told Abraham to kill Isaac. Now, that's a big thing. So he, you know, but he obeyed God and went up the top of the hill. But then when he was on the mountain, God spoke to him again. And he said, no, you need to change this and go from there. Sometimes God speaks to us just to get us moving, to get us out of where we are. But then it's, okay, God, as I'm going now, what is it that we need to do? But that's a daily basis. Sometimes that's a minute by minute basis. And uh, yeah, and going through that. So it's good. That's great. Thank, Melanie. You. Thank you. Steve, did you want to make any comments or we... No, oh, no, just amen to all of that, Wes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Really exciting. Really, really exciting. Well, I, I, I actually envision that this will become a major focus for us now for going forward, that each month we will produce a daily journal uh, and uh, the daily journey journal, which would send out to you on a monthly basis. Some of you will do it for a month or two months or three months or 12 months, or it will become a normal part of your life. Um, but I think it's actually a time of coming together. And then, so, so on these weekly calls each week, uh, so next week we'll actually go through a scripture, uh, prepare it and then have each one come together and we'll review how you're going. I'll ask you questions about what's going on and doing that. So that's great. Well, thank you guys. Um, so, so, so I've got one, I've got one question with, yep. what's this week's scripture? What's this week's scripture? Okay, so you all format. It's actually the Annunciation. So it's in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 45. I'm actually going to send you guys, for those who have signed up uh, already, I'll send it out in a PDF version so that you get that pretty quick today and uh, be later on. And then so you can start that. And then because... You know, Australia Post, how long does it take to get there? <laughs> so that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing I'm worried about. Okay. Well, that's great. Well, uh, for those of you who haven't ordered, if you go to businessblessings.com.au, you, you can go through there. Thank let you. Me yeah, pray. I will. Yep. Let me pray for you guys uh, today hey? uh, as you go. So, Father, I want to bless each one. I want to, Lord, bless them and keep them. Cause your face to shine upon them. Give them peace and give them rest. May the spirit of the Lord rest upon them, a spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, a spirit of counsel and might, and may they have a reverential fear of God. God, as they go about today, I pray that you would show them the right people to connect with today. You would grow their business to a level that's above and beyond 
what they could ever ask, dream, or imagine about simply because you love them and you have a plan and a purpose for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Bless you guys, and I look forward to being with you each week. Okay. See ya. Yep.